Welcome, Anne Louise. Welcome back. Thank How you. are you? I'm sure our Wines.com viewers and drinkers would love to know what is Super Tuscan? How did Super Tuscan, what are they? And how did they even come about? What is that whole Super Tuscan thing? That's a good question. Um, a lot of people do ask me that because it's become almost synonymous with, you know, a wine particularly or a grape or composition. And it's obviously difficult for consumers to figure out what it's about. The whole Super Tuscan uh, trend started, I believe, back in the um, literally 70s and then really turning upside down in the 80s due to the fact that a few people decided to, especially Sassicaia, decided to say, well, listen, this is our territory, this is a Toa, we're going to try with some different grapes. Cabernet, Merlot, etc., etc. Grapes other than Sangiovese, the traditional, grapes normal Grapes other than Sangiovese, grape. and saying that, by the way, you know, we know there are DOCs and DOCGs, but we're going to try something different. We're going to show that we can do really good wines, doing them in our way. So, one does that, and with tremendous success, actually. And all of a sudden, this whole Tuscan thing, and becomes a super Tuscan, uh, comes, uh, kind of benchmarks itself, Sassicaia or Nelaya. Uh, Solengo. Solengo. And um, guests recognize worldwide that um, it's possible to do something else than just Sangiovese, for instance, and do it just, as we say, an EGT, almost a table wine, which, at least in the past, was known to be something less interesting. Uh, but they, you know, they proved the consumers, they proved the press wrong, right? And um, all of a sudden, there's a tremendous interest in, in Super Tuscan. What happened at Argiano was that Giacomo Tartis, very famous uh, uh, wine enologist consultant in Italy, who was an um, enologist at Argiano uh, back in the 80s. He was the father of Sassicaia and Elia, a number of others, decided to produce uh, Solen for us. So, in comparison to the others, Solengo is, is a very small production. And um, we've, uh, you know, Solengo came out in 95 more or less just hit the world hard, had tremendous scores in 97. I don't know what they scored in the 90s, but high. And so Solengo just benchmarked itself right away and has done so ever since. I have clients coming up to me not asking for a Giano, but asking for Solengo when I'm doing tastings. Um, so Solengo is really known worldwide and uh, we're still having good success with it. We're vinifying a bit differently now. We're seeing that um, with this organic approach we're taking now uh, that the fruit is just um, so pure, so fine. We're vinifying everything separately, doing the blend in the end, um, being very particular to picking at the right time, destemming, and so on and so forth, which uh, gives us an opportunity to present us a lingo that is actually more drinkable, possible to taste once again. Previously, that might have been difficult. These old Super Tuscans back in, I'd say, the 90s were very firm. <laughs> very firm, very tannic. Very tannic. So you taste the wine, you go, this will be great in... 15 years. 15 years, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and now we're doing wines that are, you know, drinkable. You can, now we're working a bit with 05 right here. Drinkable, you can decant it two, three hours. I've had tremendous success with that. All of a sudden, it's showing all these layers. The tannins are smoothing. Um, so very positive, positive step, actually, I think. Uh, and Argiano has now gotten very, very, very popular with the, the other... So we're the NC, non-confunder. What the heck does non-confundador mean? So, <laughs> our wonderful little um, baby super Tuscan. Baby super Tuscan. NC, which is um, actually a bit in, in honor of the Olivatelli family. This is their stem and their non-confundator with their logo. Non-confundator, not to be confused, not to be mistaken by. And we decided to honor them with this uh, NC. Uh, so that's that's where the name drives. We found this stem in an old piece of furniture in the villa wow. in Ojano, so it's kind of a fun story. And we're going to be tasting the 2008 today. The 2007 did make it to yeah. Wine Spectator's Top 100. Yeah. Pretty high up on the list, in fact. A very, very, very reasonably priced wine, less than $20, around $20. Yeah. And it, really go up against anything from from california that blow away anything from california in that price range oh, so. in, in the bordeaux blend and the 08 we're drinking we're going to be tasting today is going to be 40 percent cab 20 percent merlot 20 percent syrah and 20 percent sangiovese 20 percent sangiovese we pour from here right here as you said we've had um really tremendous success with this it's a it's a young wine it came out i think probably commercially 
oh five. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's really with a it, with a bullet. I tell you, this this one is shot. I've got a bottle of the 07 sitting on my counter oh. ready to to enjoy a Friday night. In fact, yeah, yeah, I and, love this wine. Uh, and it's done so simply because it's so well composed. Wow. It's so pure. It's so drinkable. It's and, so it's um, just fun. You know, it's fun, it's fun yet it's serious. It reminds you. The of, thing is, you can't. It's not just drinking a glass. You drink the whole bottle. That's the thing. Uh, 